Uh, Wells Fargo also beating on the top and bottom line here. And the bottom line coming in at about $1.20 per share. Uh, that compares to estimates of $1.11 per share. On the top line, Wells reporting $20.9 billion, up about 1% compared to $20.2 billion that analysts were expecting. And that was an expectation for a decline. They eked out a small increase in revenue. Now, here's what I think the market will be focused on. You see shares down 3% today. Net interest income. Uh, guidance there actually unchanged compared to prior guidance. It was expected to be 7 to 9% lower than the full year 2023 level uh, of $52.4 billion. So Wells not updating its guidance. And this goes to what uh, we were talking about earlier in the hour about how a higher for longer interest rate may benefit certain firms. Wells was certainly on the list of firms that could benefit from that environment, but they are not updating guidance at this time. Uh, other highlights here, investment banking fees up 92 percent year over year to 301 million. Uh, provision for credit losses, a slight beat there uh, coming in at 938 million, comprising one point two billion in net charge offs, 219 million decrease in the allowance for credit losses. Um, and it's also worth noting that these results and those from the other banks, we are expecting to see uh, an additional FDIC special assessment charge. Remember, this is in addition to the one from 4Q because the FDIC raised its estimate for the amount they needed to cover the hole left behind from some of the bank failures of last year. For Wells Fargo in particular, that amounted to about six cents per share in an additional expense, which is already reflected in the $1.20 per share I told you guys about. Back over to you.